good morning. How's everybody doing today? It's uh, sunshiny out. You wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, really think that it's uh, cold, right? Just looking out the doors here. Looks like a nice day out there, but it's freezing, isn't it? Um, we are uh, gathered together as a people, as the people of God, to, to worship Him and to praise Him, and we're reminded of how good He is to us each and every day of our lives. And so this is an opportunity for us to, to remind each other of that. And so thank you for being here this morning. Those here in the room and those watching online, we welcome all of you, those who've been around for a while, those who are a little bit newer to Living Grace, those who may have just stumbled accidentally across this video online, we, we welcome you as well. And uh, especially if you're watching online, we'd love to, uh, to have you connect with us with our, via our connection card. And if you're, if you're newer to Living Grace, we'd also ask you to do that as well. Connection cards are in the backs of your seats. There's also a connection card online. Uh, this is a way for you to get to know Living Grace, so a, a way for us to get to know you a little bit more, and we'd, we'd love it if you would uh, connect with us in that way. We are in a series uh, called New Year Countdown. And we're actually wrapping up the series this morning. We have been learning, and in fact, we have been, uh, this has been a reminder, actually, because I think we all know this, that we can either count our days or we can make our days count. We can just watch the time fly, or we can make the most of the time that we have here on this earth. And it's the same as a church. We can just watch Sunday after Sunday pass us on by, or we can make the most of the, the time that, that God has given us, make the most of the opportunity that we have together, make the most of the ministry that he's allowed us to accomplish here as a church. And so one of the ways that we can do that, one of the ways that, that I like to do that is uh, by just pausing at the beginning of a new year, stopping, evaluating, and, and we've done that so far at the beginning of this year by looking back, Looking forward, and today we're going we're gonna to be looking up. At the beginning of the year, we, we spent some time looking back. And I shared with you some lessons that I learned from the year 2021. I encouraged you to uh, think about what God has been teaching you, how, how you have been growing in your faith, what you have been learning. And then last week, we spent some time looking forward. Where are we headed as a church? And in 2022 and beyond, and I said, we're going we're gonna to do what we have been called to do. It's our mission and our purpose as a church is to make disciples, to follow Jesus and to help people follow Jesus, and that's what we will do. That will not change. But I shared with you our new mission statement. We are going to be following Jesus together, and we follow Jesus together by becoming like the Word through the Word belonging to the body of Christ, his family, and then bringing his blessing of good news to the world. That's our, our new mission statement as a church. We're, we're not changing what we do or how we do it. We're just changing how we communicate this. I think it's a, it's a better way of communicating what we're doing as we, are, as we attempt to, to make disciples as we attempt to follow Jesus and, and help others follow Jesus. And so as we finish up this series today and move into the next series next week, we'll, we'll talk more, more about this and how we accomplish this. Today we're going to spend some time looking up because we can't do any of this as a church without, without God's Spirit, without God's power at work in us and through us. But before we talk about this, and before we spend some time talking about prayer and praying as a church, as a family, um, we're going we're gonna to spend some time taking communion together. Uh, right at the top of the service, I think this is an opportunity for us to, to celebrate and remember what God has done for us through His Son, Jesus. It's a, a remembrance of, of Jesus' sacrifice for us. It's a remembrance of of who we are as a church and, and a, a remembrance of whose we are. Now, last week, if you were here or if you were watching online, uh, you'll know that we recited the Apostles' Creed together and we were reminded of the, the foundational and the historical doctrines of our faith. 
So along with communion, a celebration that was established 2,000 years ago by Jesus himself, we're reminded that as a church, we are rooted in something big. We're rooted in something historical. We're rooted in something firm and unchanging. We're rooted in something eternal. And that's one of the things that we remember this morning as we celebrate communion together. If you're watching online, this will be your opportunity to, to find some communion elements, some juice and some bread, or just whatever you can find to, to represent the, the body and the blood of Christ. And for those here in the room, you, you have your communion elements. And uh, we're going to spend some time singing. You'll have some time to reflect. And then we'll come back and we'll take the elements together. Sorry, Matt, I keep switching mics. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he spent his last Passover meal with his disciples, and, and they had celebrated this meal many times. And Jesus broke the bread, and uh, <laughs> they had done that many times as well. There was nothing different about that. He broke the bread like they always did at the Passover meal. But this time, he said something that was just so unexpected. He said, this bread will now, from now on, represent my body that was broken for you. So take
So last week, we were talking about the Sermon on the Mount. We were actually, no, sorry, we were talking about the, the Great Commission. Someone was talking to me about the Sermon on the Mount earlier, so that was in my mind. But we were talking about the Great Commission, this very important mission that God established for the church. And that's where I want to begin this morning. Matthew chapter 28 and I want to start with verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All authority in heaven and on earth. There's so much we could say about this word authority. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. This word authority can sometimes be translated power. You may see that in your translation of the scriptures. He says, All authority and all power, I have it all in heaven and on earth. And when Jesus was, you know, walking the earth and he was ministering to people and he was healing and he was teaching, people recognized the authority. They recognized his power. They recognized that something was very, very different about Jesus. Here are some examples. Matthew chapter 7. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had Authority, one who had power, and not as their teachers of the law. Something was very, very different about how Jesus taught. He taught with authority, and he taught with, with power. Mark chapter 1, the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching? And with authority, with power. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. Jesus is teaching in power and authority. Jesus is performing miracles in power and authority. He's 
casting out impure spirits, people are amazed at his authority. In Mark chapter 2, we learn about a man who needs healing, and he's brought before Jesus, and Jesus looks at him first, and instead of healing him right away, he says, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> and, and that just upsets so many people, especially the Pharisees. And Jesus says, but I want you to know that the Son of Man, that I have authority on earth to forgive sins. I have the authority. I have the power to forgive sins. In other words, I'm, I'm God himself. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed, <laughs> it amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, we've never seen anything like this. They recognized Jesus' authority, Jesus' power. And it was amazing. Now let's just go back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Many of us remember when he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. He was fasting, going 40 days without food, and Satan came to him to tempt him. It, do, you may recall his second temptation. I just want to look at his second temptation. The devil led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world, and he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want. If you worship me, it will be yours. Satan says to Jesus, you can, you can, you know, dismiss that sacrifice thing. You, you don't have to, you don't have to go through the, the sacrifice and the cross and the pain and the suffering. Forget about all that. I can give you all the authority. And of course, we know what Jesus chose. He refused to seize power in that way. Instead, he, he gave up his power, and we know that he gave up his very life. And so later on, the Apostle Paul wrote some words in his letter to the church in Philippi to describe this. And Paul said, Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So Jesus chose to take the way of, of, of sacrifice and the way of obedience to, to his Father, and he laid down his life. And so now, on that mountainside, after his death, his resurrection, he comes to his followers, and he says, I have all authority, all power on heaven, in heaven and on earth, it's, it's, it's all power and it's all authority. Why? Why does he have all power and all authority? Because he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. And only God can do that. You see, the, the resurrection, the resurrection validated everything that Jesus said and did. The resurrection validated his, his claims of being God himself. The resurrection validated all his teaching. And so when we continue to read in Philippians, Paul continues to describe what happens or what happened with Jesus. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He has all power and all authority. And in this indescribable power, he said, I want you to, to go in that power, in that authority. Go, go and make disciples. D do these things that I've commanded you to do. Make disciples by going, by baptizing, and by teaching. And, and I will, I'm going to be with you always. I will be with you always. And, and then we read at the beginning of the book of, of Acts that he left them. I'm going to be with you always. But then he left, 
What's that all about? Let's, let's read it. But, but you will receive power, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You're going to do these things through the power of the, the Holy Spirit at work in you. And after he said this, remember he had said, I'm going to be with you always. He left them. He was taken up before their very eyes and a, a cloud hid him from their sight. You're going to accomplish all this through the power of the Holy Spirit at, at work within you. And, and they're kind of, they're putting two and two together and they remember what Jesus told them earlier. We read about it in John chapter 16. Jesus said, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. For, it's, it's for your good that I'm going to be leaving Unless I go away, the advocate or the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So how is it that you're going to be with, you're going to be with us always? Because the Holy Spirit is going to come to live inside of you. The Holy Spirit is going to in, empower God's people. The Holy Spirit will be living inside his people. The Spirit of God makes all this a reality. It's the Holy Spirit that empowers his church with the authority and the power of Jesus himself. And so Jesus' followers, they went out and they started making disciples. They started spreading the message. They started going and baptizing and teaching. They went to the ends of the earth. You know, to the ends of the earth, you're going to go to the ends of the earth. And how confusing would that have been to them? To the ends of the earth? I mean, seriously? To the ends of the earth. Such a seemingly impossible mission. Impossible task that Jesus gave his followers. Just a small group of followers. But here we are today. <laughs> it was accomplished. It was accomplished because of the power of the Holy Spirit. We follow Jesus together by becoming, by belonging, by blessing in his power, with his authority. And, and we can't overestimate this. What does this mean? What does this really mean for us? We really have to take some time to think about that. This should take the pressure off of us. This, listen, we don't have to, we don't have to control the outcomes. We don't have to try to control the outcomes. We don't have to try to control people. Only God's Spirit can change hearts. God's power, only God's power can change lives. Only God can save. Only God's Spirit can give people a desire to follow Jesus. Only God, only God can do this. This is God's church. God has a plan that's, that's way bigger than us. And God is on the move. God is doing his thing. And when we recognize this, when, when we recognize that, when we recognize that, that this cannot be accomplished with, without his power, this can only be accomplished through his power, then what do we do? If we really recognize that this all, none of this can be accomplished except through him, we will fall down on our knees and we'll pray for God to do what only he can do. God, do your thing. Do your work. Change hearts. Change lives. Once again, Paul said in Ephesians, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more, than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The worship team's gonna come back up again. And we're gonna, we're gonna spend some time in prayer calling on God to do what only he can do. We're going to ask him to change hearts and to change lives. So would you bow with me? God, do
do what only you can do as the, the God of the universe, the God of all creation. You have the authority, you have the power. This is, this is your power and your authority. This is, this is your strength. So God, do it. Do it in us. First of all, do it in me. In our church. Do what only you can do in this community. Do what only you can do in our country. Do what only you can do in our world. Change hearts, God. Change lives. Change families. Heal marriages. Heal relationships. Draw people to yourself. Do what only you can do. We want to see these things. We know you're at work. We just need to be more aware of it. We ask that you do what only you can do. Do immeasurably more than we can even ask or imagine. We spend some time now, God, praying, praying to you.
So Jesus said, I have all authority, all power in heaven and on earth. So I want you to go. I want you to go and make disciples. All authority, all authority, all power. Go and do these things. And I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm, I'm passing that authority and that power on to you. I'm, I'm going to be with you. Now, this, this takes me all the way back to creation. Reminded of, of, of the beginning, in the, in the beginning when, you know, God created human beings. He created them in His image. He created them as image bearers, created to, to partner with God, to be God's representatives on earth, to rule on his behalf, working on his behalf. And, and then, you know, we know sin messed all that up. But then because of Jesus, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, and because of the Holy Spirit's power at work in us and through us, we now can participate. We, we now can again participate in his work on earth. We once again can be his representatives. We can represent our creator, represent the father. We can once again rule in his image like he intended for it to be. We can be his representatives pointing the way to God once again because of Jesus. So I think something that we really need to think about is how does God act on earth? How does he act here in our world? Maybe another way to, answer, to ask the question is how does he answer prayer? How does he answer the prayers that we were just praying? God, do, do something big. Do something that only you can do. See, I... I firmly believe that God can do miracles. There's no doubt in my mind that God can do miracles. I think that God can intervene in supernatural ways, ways that we can't explain, that no one can explain. There, there's no doubt, and I think he does. I think he does do that. But I think more often than not, how does he act? How does he intervene? How does he answer prayers? through his people, through his church, through, through you and through me. That, that's what he's chosen to do for some reason. And, and, and I don't understand that. He's always wanted to partner with people. He's always wanted us to be his representatives here on earth. He says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. Uh, the uh, famous preacher Charles Spurgeon from the 1800s, he, he said this, when we were united by faith to Christ, his interests and ours become mutual and identical. And I love that. And I think this is a good way for us to kind of evaluate our lives. Are, do we have the same interests as Jesus? Are, are they the same? We're called to reflect God's interests, his purposes in the world. So how does God work? His work is our work. We choose to participate. We have to choose to be open and, and willing to be used by God however he sees fit here to advance his kingdom. We're walking, talking temples of the Holy Spirit at work in us and through us. We're walking and talking answers to prayer. We're walking vessels of Jesus' power and authority on earth as it is in heaven. And so how do we, how do we display this? How do we, how do we show this power and authority? How are we representatives? Well, just like, just like Jesus did, and so I once again want to turn to Philippians. We've been reading. And I 
want to read several passages here, or several verses here. Starting with verse 3, Paul says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And then we read what we read earlier. Who being in the, in the very nature of God, this is the mindset of Jesus. The very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So what if, what if we saw every interaction that we had, maybe every conversation that we have throughout the day, throughout the week, what, what if we saw these, these interactions, these conversations with, with, with strangers with family members, with friends, with neighbors, with coworkers, with classmates? What if we saw these conversations and these interactions as disciple-making opportunities? As disciple-making opportunities. Opportunities to, to interact with people on God's behalf as His representative. Opp opportunities to act in his power and his authority. What if we saw these interactions and these conversations that we have all the time as opportunities to display his, his authority and his power uh, through the Holy Spirit at work, when, uh, with, through the Holy Spirit at work within us and through us. And so we will pray for God to do what only he can do, we have to do that over and over and over again. I want us to pray, God, do what only you can do because we can't, we can't change hearts. We can't change minds. This, this is your work. This is your church. But if you dare to pray for God to do what only he can do, you also must be ready and willing and available for God to do his work through you. Because that's often how he works. Brian Biedenbach told me this story a few weeks ago. If you've been around Living Grace for a while, you know he, a couple of different times, he presented his, his three-story uh, from the presentation um, curriculum from Youth for Christ on, on how they uh, present opportunities to share your faith. And, and he, he went through the three-story relationships with us, and, he, and he's been asked to, to do that in various other churches. And, and another church a few weeks ago asked him to come and present his three-story relationships with, with, a, with a, a group. And so he did. And at the end, uh, the, the teacher kind of, the, the, the group leader opened it up and said, do, we, do you have any prayer requests? Let's just share what's going on in your lives. And, and one man spoke up. Brian told me this story. He said, I could share it with you because I think this, this, this speaks to this so well. This man in the group speaks up and says, I have a coworker who's going through so much right now. And he started kind of listing the things that was going on in that man's life. Just so much. He was going through so much. And the leader of the group said, yeah, of course we'll pray for that. But this is an opportunity for you to speak into his life. This is an opportunity for you to get involved. This is an opportunity for you to take action. This is an opportunity for you, sir, to be an answer to prayer. And the man was kind of speechless, didn't know what to say. So we will pray for God to do what only he can do. But we have the living presence of Jesus inside of us. 
He's passed along his power and his authority to us. I will be with you, he said. I will be with you. His power, his authority. And we have the, the promised Holy Spirit in us. And so we will pray for God to do what only he can do, but we'll also pray for, for him to do his work through us. God, do your work through us. Do your work, first of all, in me, and then through me, and through us, and through your church, in your power, and your authority. And you said you'll be with, you'll be with us. And so we go, and we do your work your power, and your authority. Worship team, come back up. I'm keeping them hopping. So we're going to spend some more time in prayer. And th I think this is a bold prayer. It's often hard for us to pray like this. It's sometimes scary. We're going to pray for God to do great things, and we're going to pray that he'll do those things through us. He'll first of all do his work in us, and then he'll use us. So bow, and let's pray together. Just spend some time praying. What's, what's on your heart and what's on your mind? Maybe, maybe you have a, a family member. You you. you have a family member and you desperately want this family member to come to know Jesus. Pray for that family member. Pray for God to change his or her heart. But then take it a step further and pray that God would use you. God would use you in some way to speak to that person. Maybe you know someone who has a big need in their life neighbor, a family member, a co-worker. Pray for that neighbor. Pray for that friend. Pray for that co-worker. And then take it a step further and say, God, use me to meet that need somehow. How can I, how can I meet, how can you meet that need through me? God, give me courage to speak up, to share my faith. Courage to, to love and to serve. God, we pray that you'll do your work here at Living Grace. Do what you do. Help us follow Jesus together. Help us grow in these ways. God, you do that work in us, we're asking. But then, God, give me a desire to contribute to the disciple-making process. Continue to pray in this way as the Spirit leads you.
Let's sing this one more time. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Amen. Before you leave, I just have... Uh, some ways to, to respond and um, maybe a couple of announcements here. Most of you probably know that we have prayer mail here at the church, that we uh, send uh, prayer updates, prayer needs through to the congregation. And so if you are not on that list and you want to receive the prayer and mails and these prayer updates when there's when there's a need in the congregation that let me know or, or use your connection card or, or send us a message online or use your connection card online and let us know make sure we have your current email address and we can add you to the prayer mail and uh, and that's an opportunity for us to pray for one another what I would love if we would even take it a step further and as we pray for that need we also pray and say now, God, is there, is there an opportunity here for me to step in, for you to use me in any way? Is, is there something that I can do? Is, can I send a note of encouragement? Can I make a phone call? Can I make a meal and deliver it? God, do what only you can do, but then is there something that I can do? I would love for us to think that way as we see these, these prayer mails come through. So, so for one, if you can be added to the list if you want to be added to the list. And then let's be, let's be mindful of, of how we can be involved in the lives of one another. And we can be answers to, to prayer. And, and here's the thing, too, and I've mentioned this before, but I would love for us to be on the lookout for God's work among us. God, God's at work. God is doing his thing. He's, he's on the move. And so let's, let's pray that we can be more aware of God's work among us. And, and if we see God working in, a just, uh, in, in whatever way, a big way, a small way, then send that through to prayer mail. Call me, send me an email, send the office an email. Say, here's how I saw God at work this, this week or today or at work or at school or whatever. Here, God's on the move and God's doing his thing and I want everybody to know about it. And then we can come to the Lord as, as, a, as a body, as a family and say, God, thank you that you're doing immeasurably more than we could even ask or imagine. Let's, let's, let's think of our prayer mail in that way. And then I ask that you just continue to pray for living grace. I would ask that you pray daily that, that we would be courageous and that we would be bold that we would be loving, that we would be servants. Let's, let's pray that God will do what only He can do. Because God, only God can change hearts. Only God can change lives. Only God can intervene in these miraculous ways to turn people to Him and, and to, to give people a desire to follow His Son, Jesus. So pray that God will do that among us here at Living Grace. And then let's also pray that God would, would use us God would use us and however he sees fit in the year 2022 and beyond. I ask that you do that and join me in prayer as we pray for our church. So let's close in prayer. God, we're so thankful for this opportunity to be here this morning, to be with your body, to be with your family, opportunity to, to praise you, to worship you through singing, through our conversations before and after the service as we lift you up in prayer, as we open your word, these are all opportunities for us to worship and glorify you. And so now we continue to have opportunities as we leave this place, continue, continuing to worship you by the, how we live our lives. Give us the strength to do that. God, do what only you can do inside of us, in our community, in our workplace, in our families, in our neighborhoods. And then use us. Use me 
however you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you back next week and have an awesome week.